So I was just want to dive straight into the topic of I'm the bus. Yes. Because in a week or two, you'll be on stage here at the Trist. Yeah. And so I want to just understand what I'm the bus is all about mm -hmm. in not 280 characters. Yes. And why you put it together. Okay, cool. So um, a friend of mine asked me to watch the new Dave Chappelle special, Closer. And um, I did that and, and we did it through a critical lens from uh, an, a, a sort of his previous um, politics. Um, so there was that. And then around that same time, there was this Gareth Cliff incident with um, uh, Rizzoli. So, so um, I, I was also interested in that. And then I was studying in the background, uh, part of my thesis was reading a, a lot on um, social identity theory, self-categorization theory, um, all of these quite profound um, theories around from the time we're born, what shapes us. And, um, and so we inherit certain memberships of groups because we're a social creature, so they're handed to us. We then also, in the course of growing up, we, we negotiate certain memberships of certain groups. And this goes back to what I was saying about high school. I wasn't in a lot of those groups. I was very much an outsider. So, so then what happens is we start to trade our identity, parts of it, as a currency to buy entry into other groups. So by the time we arrive at sort of, you know, young adulthood, we have what's called a social construct. We, we have developed a portfolio of memberships um, that define who we are. And, and that interaction will then be defined by where we end up going, who we end up with, what our children are like, where we work, you know, what we believe. Um, and, and what struck me in, there were commonalities between what Gareth Cliff did and what Dave Chappelle did. I think they were both bullies in a certain way, but it's, there's much more to it. But, but it's interesting to me that Dave Chappelle comes across as sort of someone trying to, you know, court the gay and the transgender communities by saying that because he's black, he's part of a minority and he kind of has an affinity and he admires them while he's sort of um, damning about them or insulting. Gareth Cliff um, um, makes a living out of being sort of, you know, abrasive and controversial. I've always wondered whether that's backed by rigor. Y you know, I know Gareth and we have great conversations. But the way that that unfolded, particularly on video, um, and the way it was edited by supporters um, of the victim, um, um, provided two beautiful opportunities for me to look at the identity of the white male. And, um, and then I thought about it, and um, so I'll talk about it in the talk, but we, I'm going to unpack those two incidents and show, um, because Gareth spoke about the fact that gender identity or gender politics has no place um, and the idea that a black woman in 2020 uh, shouldn't be able to express, uh, you know, her own hurt from racism. It's very hard to separate, particularly racial identity, if you read the research. It's one of the strongest memberships we have on earth. So I'm going to trace back through evolution how agency has been passed from species to species, particularly ending up in the white male at a certain point as a kind of a... Um, a triumph of evolution because it had to find an agent for the hmm. most power and it got to because evolution's a fight it's not a you know people think it's a zen process of like beautiful you know develop it's a bloody it's a boxing match and if you're weak you get you get killed so the white male somehow had a strategy and emerged dominant we have to use gender politics we have to use gender identity we have to use um, all of those things to redistribute the thinking around how we build social systems. That's why the Nordics are so good at building social systems, because they filter it through everyone. They've broken the agency away from the white male. And we could do that here, particularly where there aren't that many white males. So, so why the hell are we mm. so dominant? So that's kind of the basis of the talk. I mean, it's going to be funny and it's going to be controversial and I'm going to use some bad language, but <laughs> But <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's when I get the doctor, I'm going to finish my throat tattoo. I want to be the scumbag doctor on that platform <laughs> graduating. <laughs> kids need to see that. You can, have, you can have ink and a PhD. It's cool, kids. Yeah, the freaks win. 